materials so we can make this witch hat. Okay, before I decoupage items, crafts, especially the ones that are like these uh, cardboard or paper mache, I like to paint them white because I feel like that um, whatever material, whether it's a napkin or a um, tissue paper, any of that, when you're putting the decoupage on, you don't want the brown that's under here to impact the color of the material that you're putting on top of it. The same holds true for glitter. I've glittered a whole bunch of items like this and the glitter just um, color pops a lot more when it's painted white on the inside. All right, so I couldn't find my favorite um, white wedding cake Martha Stewart paint anywhere in my messy craft room, and I'm very sad about it, but I have um, this uh, paint that I got at Target. I've used the chalk paint on several things. It's really good paint. It's nice and thick. I used the um, black on it of it on that uh, Wicked sign that I made the other day, so it's really good paint. It's nice and thick. I'm just not interested and painting like a million coats of paint onto things. So, I'm just gonna paint a thin coat. Again, we don't want it to be super thick. It'll take forever to dry. And this is technically a paper material and so you don't want it to soak in too much. But basically, I'm gonna paint this and let it dry. So we'll be going to fast forward mode because you do not wanna watch me paint this in real time. step we're going to be making some of these strips uh, for the brim. I have already cut 16. I'm not sure how many I'll need but I'm going to cut one more just to show you how I did it. So I take a napkin and I unfold it and by the way I got these at Dollar Tree for a dollar this whole um, stack but you can find these year round at just about any grocery store to be honest with you. What I like about these though is that the uh, circles are kind of, uh, well, they're not perfect, they're irregular. And I like that because I think that adds to the whole whimsical of the whimsical witch hat, you know. So anyway, I unfold these and I don't know if you're aware, but paper napkins usually come in layers and we don't want the layer that's underneath. We only want the layer that has the print on it. So I have to take these off. And uh, you can throw these in the trash or you can keep them. I'm actually hanging on to them. They're napkins and I make lots of messes in my craft room so it'll be easy just to grab one of these. Especially <laughs> decoupage, I guarantee you I'll probably use those up, wiping up extra Mod Podge off of things. So all you do is you unfold it like that. Then you're just going to follow the lines to cut. it into four pieces. All right, so you have four of these pieces and then you're just gonna cut these in half to make these strips. I'm going to go along the brim first and then wrap it around the edge like 
that when I with the decoupage once and then kind of it'll go up on the edge of the hat too so it'll kind of be like that and then once the brim is done then I'll go up the side of it with some longer strips but these are perfect um, size to do the brim of the hat and so I'm gonna have maybe like 24 of these which maybe it's too many but I'd rather um, have all the ones I need before I get going and then instead of having to stop right in the middle of it to cut more. And again, we get this whole giant stack for a dollar, so I don't have to worry. There, we got one more to cut. There we go, I got a giant stack of those. All right, so now on to the next step. The paint is still drying on that hat, so we'll go ahead and cut the napkins for the brim of the hat. and. What I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to measure, I'm going to open this up and sort of measure how long they would need to be so that I can go ahead and cut them. All right, for the tall part of the hat, I went ahead and measured and it looks like unfolded just in half. Um, we have this half of the napkin and then like a little over a third. It's not exact. I just need a little bit to bend over um, on the brim of it since it's a point we don't really have to worry about that at the top so much although I may take like a little piece of one of these I have learned this in uh, doing Christmas trees and stuff take a little cap like cut off a little piece and put that over the top like that we'll get to that in a minute though all right so that's what I did I cut that much off and of course I have to peel off the extra and yeah I could have done that before I cut it but I didn't Right, so we know that this length is good. So again, I'm just gonna cut along the line here. And then I'm gonna cut lengthwise, cut them in half strips. Now you notice I'm not giving you measurements. This isn't exact math. This is crafting. We <laughs> We will see when we get there. I mean, I held it up to it and I measured it. And yes, I could have taken a ruler and did that, but I just don't think it's necessary. Right, so this is four pieces. So I think I'm going to do a couple of napkins. Again, these were only a dollar, so it's not going to be wasted. Now this is the piece that I cut off. And I'm thinking, instead of wasting that, it's a little bit of a wider piece, but I think that's okay. But I think I'll just cut this same length. And then look what I have here. I have a little piece to put at the top for the point. So, yeah. Okay. I'll separate that in a minute. I'll do that in a minute. <laughs> I don't like to fiddle with stuff too long. All right, there we go. So now we have five pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and cut one more of these napkins just like that. You don't need to watch. And um, once that hat's dry, then we can go ahead and start with the decoupage. All right, for this part of the craft, we're going to get to the fun part and mod podge or decoupage the um, napkin pieces onto the hat and we're gonna start with the brim. Now I have uh, taped down a piece of freezer paper, but you could use parchment paper, wax paper. We just want something that the uh, Mod Podge isn't going to stick to when we sit the hat down because um, there's really no good way to sit this down. I mean, I could, um, you know what, I could probably do this. I could probably just take like a bottle of paint and sit it like that. Ooh, that'll work. Okay, so I'll remember that. Ooh, or maybe, there we go. Why don't I just leave it like that so that when I'm working with it, I can just turn it and I don't have to worry about it. That's a great idea. So we're gonna be working on decoupaging this. I put the paper down so I don't have to wipe up the table. I get stuff all over this table all the time. And um, you don't have to use Mod Podge, but that is my preferred uh, medium to use for decoupage. And then I prefer also to use the black foam brushes, the cheapy ones, but I am fresh out of those. So I'm just using an old paintbrush. I used this for uh, that Mod Podge project the other day and it worked fine, but Judging from how stiff the base of it is, this might be the end of the life of this old guy, but I've had this for a year, so I'm not really super worried about it. And I have enough paint brushes for a year, so not too worried about it. All right, so we're gonna get started. Now, I personally don't like to um, work or apply the Mod Podge too far in advance. I like to do it 
in small sections. Wow, going through that bottle pretty fast. And so, I love the smell of this. Who else loves the smell? I think I asked you about this earlier. It's weird, it has a weird funky smell, but I like it. I think it reminds me of those, uh, remember the purple mimeographs? We have to be old to remember this, but anyway, I think that's what it reminds me of. All right, so I'm going to start on the brim. And again, I'm just gonna be doing a small section. And you know what? We're gonna test this out, because I didn't really, again, do any math. I just sort of eyeballed it. We'll see how many of these. Yeah, see that, that covers a pretty good surface area. And again, we want to kind of, oh, I didn't paint up the side of there today. We want to kind of go up the side of the hat a little bit. Just a little bit. And then I already painted, or um, put the Mod Podge there. So we'll start up this side of it like this. So <laughs> I made those like super long. That is okay though. So see how it's curving here? I think I kind of want to trim this so it'll lay flat. That's just probably me being OCD about it. painting. Well, when I say paint, just know that I mean the Mod Podge. I think because I'm using a paintbrush. What's great about using napkins is that the Mod Podge will penetrate it down to underneath if you missed a spot under to put it. And I really appreciate that. And for the rest of this, I'm just kind of lightly, I'm not rubbing, I'm just kind of patting to make sure that it's uh, soaking in. There we go. Okay, we got that. And I'm just going to flip this over because I want this to be set on there. See if you can see. And put some here. We're not as concerned about the other meat underneath of it. If it has some creases, we want it to look nice on the top. We can do that. And we can always go back later smooth that down. All right, so we got our first piece on there. So now I'm just going to keep doing the sections just like that. So we want to make the part that we're putting the Mod Podge on, you know, obviously white enough that it's going to get coverage for that napkin. And what I want to do here is I'm going to overlap the napkins so that we don't have a gap. So we have that down. Again, I'm gonna kind of trim this just a smidge so I can get it to lay down. to pour the Mod Podge into like a little dish to make it easier to get out. I'm just going to explain why I dip it right out of the bottle. So I'll do that. Um, it's very slow to come out because it's kind of thick, but then I feel like it dries faster and I end up wasting a lot more of it. So I prefer just to dip it straight out of the bottle. I don't know if that's what Martha Stewart would do, but that is what I do. So I'm putting a little more on the bottom just to fold that over. And again, we're not so concerned if we have creases and stuff back here or underneath, because we're not gonna see that. Yep, there we go. Piece two. All right, so now I'm gonna finish the brim. I'll do that on fast mode for you guys so you don't have to sit real time and watch that. And then we'll catch back up at the end when we're about to um, 
do the tall part of the hat. Now see how this is overlapping and like that circle got cut off and I just don't think it matters. It's a, a whimsical type of pattern. And once this all dries, I mean, I think it's gonna look really neat. I don't even care if some of the sections of the white circles look a little gray because my um, Halloween decorated dining room, it's all spooky. It's all black, white, and gray. And so it's gonna go with it, fit in with it perfectly no matter what. So this is fun. It's a fun journey. You never know what this is gonna look like ahead of time. I'll be honest with you. You never know how these napkins are gonna turn out, but I think this is gonna look super cute. So I'll catch back up with you in a sec.
Okay, once you've gone around the brim to make sure that um, all the parts are decoupaged the way you want, we're gonna move on to the tall part. Now I wanna point out there's a couple of little spots that are white that are peeking through, but in all honesty, they're not really noticeable just because some of the circles are cut off anyway, and so it just kind of looks like it blends in. But I'm really liking some of the parts where it's uh, transparent and the gray is coming through. It almost looks like um, the circles are drawn on with chalk, and I think that looks pretty cool. All right, so we're just going to start with one section. Oh, you know what? Scratch that. We're going to start at the top. Remember that little square that we cut? We're going to put that puppy on first so that we're, our top is completely covered. Now, I've decoupaged little paper mache Christmas trees as I mentioned before and uh, it's really easy to stab through <laughs> on that. So you want to be very careful not to do that. So what I'm going to do is almost like a spiral. So I was very gentle, I don't know if you can see. Very gentle, putting that up at the top just to make sure it didn't poke through. All right, so we have that on. So now we're gonna start with our first piece. Where did I start putting decoupage? Yeah, right here. So I'm gonna continue there and we wanna go up the whole length. Don't worry about if this goes on the exact width of your strip because you can like like I said before you can always add more because the napkins are very porous it's very easy so I want it to kind of go let's see if I can show you right to the edge of the brim there we go kind of smoothing I try not to touch this with my fingers too much though because once you get the um, Mod Podge on your fingers, then it wants to stick to the um, napkin and then it's just a giant mess. So we're decoupaging that over. Oh, I just flung Mod Podge. Hopefully it didn't get on anything that shouldn't have glue on it. <laughs> Alright, so see how nicely that went on there like that. So we may not need all the ones that we cut looking at this. So we're just gonna make sure we're all smoothed down. All right, so just the one piece covered like half of it. Of course, it's gonna overlap to some extent too. All right, so now we're gonna start on the next section. Overlap over the other one and have it go straight to the brim. And I'm just kind of patting it down in the middle part with my fingers because there's not that much glue. And just kind of smoothing it. I'll turn it around. I'll take take some of this Mod Podge. research that. I should have done that before making this video. What is that top part of that? This is the brim. I don't know. The point. <laughs> For a witch hat. I know it's called a point. Whoops. See, I just touched that napkin with my finger and it wants to stick to it. So I need to try very hard not to touch it. That little point should be safe. This stuff dries pretty fast, I think, in general. Okay. So we have that. We're still kind of at the halfway point though. Just because it's creating an angle right there. 
but I don't want to come in at an angle, so I'm still going to go straight up. some more Mod Podge. Okay, so I think I'll speed this up. This is going to be pretty much more of the same. I don't think it's going to take that many more, but I'm not sure. So the decoupage is done. We're going to let this um, sit and dry, uh, preferably overnight. I don't think I need that long. The temperature is favorable in my house, so I don't think it's gonna take that long to dry. So I'm going to go do some other things while this dries, and then we'll come back and we'll decorate it. And you wanna make sure to know if uh, it has dried first of all, um, you shouldn't feel any wet, damp, or squishy parts. It should be hard as a rock. And you shouldn't see any of the white glue. It should dry transparent. And I use the glossy kind just because I like the finish of it. I know I used a matte paint underneath, but I don't think that really matters. But um, I like the glossy decoupage. I like the um, the sheen that it does. But by all means, if you'd prefer a matte one, then you know go for it. Um, they also have the little bottles of that at Dollar Tree, the little um, Mod, Mod Podge bottles. I got a few of those for like to-go projects. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to let this dry, then we'll come back and then we'll decorate it. For the hat decorations, I ended up wrapping the brim with a black feather boa, and then I glued on a black rose, and then I glued on a black spider, and I found all of those pieces at Dollar Tree. watching my video it would be really cool if you watched another one and if you really like my channel it would be so great if you subscribed I'd appreciate it thanks mm -hmm.